It's time for a new suit. Yes, we've made it all the way to the suit of swords. Now, regular viewers will know that I haven't exactly been jumping through hoops at the prospect of working through these particular cards. The swords can be a little bit touchy. We do tend to find some of the more challenging images of the tarot here. I've said before that I feel like I live through the cards when I make these videos and... I can't do this, I'm getting out of here. For God's sake, man, get a grip. They're just cards, they're not gonna jump up and bite you on the arse. Yes, sorry, we're gonna stay with it and battle our way through. They're definitely not gonna bite me on the arse, right? And so as ever, we'll be kicking off with the quintessential card of the suit, the ace. All of the aces in the tarot represent the core concept of their particular element, and in this case, that element is air. We've been through the will and passion of the fiery wands, we've swam through the deep ocean of emotions and feelings with the watery cups, and now we're flying on the winds of thought and intellect with the airy swords. This suit deals with the truth of the matter. Swords can obviously represent conflict and pain, but they also symbolize cutting through lies and illusions. Now that can be finding out that we're being lied to or deceived in some way, but on a deeper level, it involves the lies that we tell ourselves. The first and most famous of the three Delphic maxims is know thyself. And if we're truly going to know ourselves, then that means we're gonna need to travel to places within us that we generally try to avoid. As the saying goes, the truth hurts, but who wants to keep living in a world of illusion? If you've seen my video for the Moon card back at number 18 in the Trumps, you'll know that the Fool had to travel between the towers and into the darkness before he could emerge into the sunlight. Yeah, and look at me. I came out all right. And if I can do it, anyone can do it. That is true. A rare moment of wisdom there. Thank you very much. Even a broken clock tells the right time twice a day. Jesus once said, know the truth and the truth will set you free. So we're going to make that journey between the towers so we can come out into the sunlight and see things as they really are. Are you ready? I'm not. So I mentioned before about how the aces represent the core concept of each suit. Alistair Crowley calls them blind forces in the sense that they're neither good nor bad, but they represent potential. So we're kind of at a neutral spot to begin with. According to Arthur Edward Waite in The Key to the Tarot, a hand issues from a cloud, grasping a sword, the point of which is encircled by a crown. There is some importance with regard to the direction that the swords point to in this suit, but in this case, the sword is pointing straight up into the sky. This takes us back to the Justice card at number 11 in the Trumps. The idea is that a sword pointing straight up will cut through the lies to get to the truth. As with all the swords in the tarot, we can see that it's two-edged, which represents choices and decisions. And as with all the aces, we've also got the sword being offered to us as a gift from the clouds. With regard to the crown on the card, Waite goes on to say, the crown may carry a much higher significance than comes usually within the sphere of fortune telling. So he's making quite a big deal out of it, but once again he doesn't elaborate. Crowns in the tarot can sometimes be taken as a symbol of pride. We saw that on the tower card back at 16 in the Trumps. On that card, the crown represented the ego shattering, as we can see it being dislodged from the roof by the lightning flash. This card is obviously a lot less dramatic, but we can see a similar idea on the ace, that the sword is cutting through the veils of the ego to get to the reality of ourselves. Basically, you may as well leave your ego at the door with this suit, because you're not going to need it. That reality can be in the form of a psychological truth, or it can be spiritual in nature. Rachel Pollock says, pointing straight up for true perception, the sword pierces the crown of the material world. Wisdom leads us beyond illusions and limitations to the spiritual truth contained within life. Supporting the idea that the crown represents the material world, we can see we've got some greenery attached to it, a berry plant on one side and a fern on the other. We can also see drops above the hilt in the shape of the Hebrew letter Yud, the first letter of the name of God in the Hebrew Bible. We see this on all the aces, and it signifies that these cards are divine in origin, with the exception of the Ace of Pentacles, which represents the element of Earth. We've got a very grand image on the Thoth card, not a million miles away from the Wade Smith version. We've still got the sword pointing straight up into a crown of swords. Crowley says the card represents the sword of the Magus, crowned with the 22 rayed diadem of pure light. So when Crowley talks about the Magus, he's referring to the Thoth version of the Magician back at number one in the Trumps. The number 22 has got so many correspondences in the occult that I could make a video just about that. But we've obviously got the 22 cards in the Major Arcana, 22 paths between the Sephiroth on the Tree of Life, 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. All these things are connected. He goes on to say, upon the blade accordingly is inscribed the word of the law. Does anyone know what that is? Has it got anything to do with cabbages?
Okay, so it actually says Thelema, which is the Greek word for will, and the name of Crowley's own spiritual philosophy. Right, so nothing to do with cabbages then? No, it hasn't got anything to do with cabbages. This word sends forth a blaze of light, dispersing the dark clouds of the mind. Lon Milo Duquette talks about how glimpsing the deeper spiritual truths can result in the mind going into overdrive in order to avoid it. He says the mind violently resists identification with any higher levels of consciousness. Consequently, from out of the mind springs conflict, frustration, anxiety, worry and sorrow. He goes on to talk about how this can create the kind of mental situation that we see in so many of the sword cards, but also why they're such an important part of finding ourselves. He says, is it any wonder the suit of swords is filled with so many unpleasant cards? However, in the proper hands, the sword can be the weapon that cuts through the crap. As you'd probably expect, the Sforza and Marseille cards are flowery and swordy. Yes, I'm coining the term swordy for this section. The Sforza card has the Viconti family motto on there, a bon droit, which apparently means by legitimate right. Make of that what you will. The Marseille card was clearly the inspiration for Pamela Coleman Smith's version, right down to the greenery attached to the crown. The Solobuska card has a giant red sword being held onto by two gentlemen. One looks a bit like George Michael in the 80s, and the other one is going for the award of most awkward position you could ever find yourself in. Everything has its period, even distress has a term limit, and Generation 3 at the Sphere of the Globe illustrated by Six is a happy omen. There you go, we've got a happy omen. I've got absolutely no idea why, but I'll take whatever I can get when it comes to the swords. And Eteila for that matter. The hermetic title of the Ace of Swords is Root of the Powers of Air. So we've talked about how the Aces represent the core concept or root of each suit. The element of air corresponds with thought, intellect and knowing the truth about ourselves. So we're at the very beginning of that idea. By the way, in the Grand Atelier Tarot book, the title for this card is not just pregnancy, but extreme pregnancy. Maybe that means you're going to have triplets or something. That's extreme hyphen pregnancy. Two different words. Oh, okay. So you're going to have an extreme time and you're going to get pregnant. You know, sometimes I wonder which one's supposed to be the fool. The Ace of Swords takes up the 90 degrees of the zodiac wheel that incorporates Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces. Aquarius sits in the centre as the fixed sign to correspond with air, the element attributed to swords. Once again, as it's the Ace, that means we're taking up a whole quarter of the zodiac pizza. This is also the first time we've seen Capricorn since the Devil card. The Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces quadrant of the Zodiac covers the North Pole and the Americas. The Page and Princesses take up the same area. In fact, one of the hermetic titles for these cards is Throne of the Ace of Swords, so the Ace is on top of the Princess. <laughs> the Ace of Swords resides in the world of Yetzirah and sits at the highest sephira of Keter, at the very top of the Pillar of Mildness. We've moved into the airy realm of Yetzirah, which is the world of formation. This is where ideas become actualized into something definite. Imagine that you've got a burning desire to create an underwater bicycle. You've felt that desire in the world of Absolute, you've imagined it in the world of Briar, and now you're drawing up actual plans and figuring out where the fins are going to go in the world of Yetzirah. All that remains is to build the thing in the manifested world of Ossiar, and you can be the first person to ride a bike from Southampton to New York. Keter is the divine sephira of all creation. It represents pure potential, so you can see why the aces live there. According to Samuel McGregor Mathers, the name of the first sephira is Keter, the crown. The divine name attributed to it is the name of the father given in Exodus 3. Er, her, ye, I am. It signifies existence. The Ace of Swords herb is chamomile. This herb can provide peace and protection and will help you centre yourself when you're meditating. Um, um. <clears throat> ah, I didn't steal the underpants. What? Nothing. But what does it all mean? The Ace of Swords represents truth, clarity and force. It can go either way in a reading, depending on the context. Wade says triumph, the excessive degree in everything. Conquest, triumph of force. It is a card of great force, in love as well as in hatred. So we talked earlier about how the aces are neither good nor bad, they just represent the essence of the suit, and the same can be said for the truth. Sometimes the truth can be a blessing, and a lot of times it can break our hearts. The sword on the ace can be used for good or evil, which one depends on us and how we decide to use it. 
We can see it as an intellectual triumph, so it's a great card to get if you're in the planning stages of a new project. A breakthrough in understanding is another meaning. That can be in a psychological or spiritual way, or just in the form of a sudden realization. In a relationship sense, it can be a sign that you're moving on from confusion and into a better place. You know when people say you've cleared the air after an argument? That's a good indicator of this kind of thing, and ties in nicely with the element it represents. Rachel Pollack says, in confusing, emotional or oppressive situations, the mind can pierce the fog and knots to give a clear understanding of the real facts. It can also be a sign that we need to be watchful of the forceful element. Sometimes force can be an appropriate response to a situation, but not always. At other times, we need to be mindful of people's feelings. We don't want to use the sword to cut them down, so this is a good time to think before we act. If you're a single man, then it means that you're going to be spending more time gripping your pork sword. No, it doesn't. For God's sake, how old are you? You'll be surprised by a thunderstorm and lightning will strike your property or that of a close relative. That'd be a shock. Ow! Great misery is predicted for you. Do take care to put something aside. Or as the saying goes, keep a pair for thirst. Oh yeah, they're always saying that round here. In times of great misery, what could be more comforting than a pear? The reversed Ace of Swords can mean that the truth becomes obscured and we're falling into confusion. Wait says reversed, the same, but the results are disastrous. Another account says conception, childbirth, augmentation, multiplicity. It's another pregnancy card. Tarot readers are going to be taking over the whole world if this keeps up. Anyway, I think the disastrous results he's talking about could be the inappropriate use of force and the chaos that can bring into our lives. Rachel Pollack says the grip fails, bringing illusion, confused ideas and feelings, overpowered emotions. In such situations, the Ace of Swords reverse tells us to take hold of ourselves and try to find a balanced sense of reality. I keep coming back to the Temperance card. Finding a harmony between emotions and actions is something to keep in mind when the Ace appears upside down. In the reverse, this card predicts that a marriage will not take place because of gossip, which she, with proper prudence, could have avoided. Well, there you go. Careless talk costs, well, weddings, apparently. The big takeaway for the Ace of Swords is cutting through the fog of lies to get to the truth. I'm sure we've all experienced those brief moments of clarity that seem to send our lives on a new course. It's also about having the courage to face the truth, even if that seems like a scary prospect. C.S. Lewis once said, If you look for truth, you may find comfort in the end. If you look for comfort, you will not get either comfort or truth. Only soft soap and wishful thinking. It's the beginning of a new suit and an indicator that even more witless drivel is on its way. May the coming days bring you truth and intellect. Until next time.